If there's one thing I've learned, it's that getting outside is always worth it, no matter the weather. Welcome to Humans Outside, where we're building a life around spending time in nature while learning from fascinating outdoor-minded guests. I'm Amy Bouchotts, a journalist originally from the beach in California, now working to love nature from my home in Alaska. Since September 2017, I've spent at least 20 consecutive minutes outside every single day, no matter what. Ready to hear from experts and outdoor lovers who make heading into nature just a part of who they are while we work to do the same? Let's go! Getting into nature with kids can be both hugely challenging and rewarding. Add a range of ages or a child with special needs and you've amped up both the challenge and the reward. Isn't it true that often the hardest things are the ones that are the most worth it? Melody Forsyth knows that firsthand. Melody and her family, including four kiddos, one of whom is now married, make getting outside just a way of life. But that wasn't really the case until her daughter Ruby was born. Ruby has Down syndrome, a special needs medical condition that presents a range of abilities depending on the person. And it was in learning how to move through her family's new normal that Melody headed outside with her daughters and sons and found her life completely changed. Her story has been told through multiple short films that I found really inspiring, including a film with REI and a short film called Her Way, produced by Solomon. Today, Melody is here to share her story with us, including her insights on how nature connects us to our children. Melody, welcome to Humans Outside. Thank you so much for having me. Man, I am so excited to talk to you today about kids and the outdoors and your family and just all of this stuff. But if you could please start us off by telling us um, where we're talking to you today. We'd like to envision ourselves having our conversations with our guests in their favorite outdoor space. Well, my favorite outdoor space would definitely be just amongst the red rocks in Southern Utah. It's my favorite place to be. We love to be there as a family, love to just sit and enjoy the incredible silence, the views, the vista. We just, we love it all. I love that juxtaposition of the silence because I know you go outside with your kids and kids, not so silent. Yeah. So. <laughs> But I feel like with kids, but you'll sometimes you'll get a moment, like there is a moment where everyone's just kind of quiet and taking it in, yeah. or maybe they're just exhausted, but either way, like <laughs> it's just, you know, a, 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 a cool moment to spend together. Yeah. And it's even better when you're in a super quiet place that really highlights. So like chaos ends all around and here you are, red rocks, silence. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. Um, can, and you are coming to us from Utah today. You are yes. located. In yeah, Utah. we live outside Salt Lake City. Right on. So can you talk to us about um, how you became a person who likes to go outside? So I think I just kind of stumbled on accident. I mean, I've always enjoyed the outdoors. Um, you know, I went to girls camp when I was, you know, a teenager and had fun doing those things. Uh, just never like it wasn't a priority or something I would ever like really schedule or planned. Um, and it really was just when Ruby came along that we really started as we got into the outdoors to kind of, you know, escape the, you know, what we were going through and to just kind of expose her to the outside was when it just became a healing place for us. And we just realized how much we loved being outside. And then it was from there, it just snowballed. So that like now it's a total way of life for us. Yeah. So tell us about Ruby. I, I mentioned she has Down syndrome, but of course, if you know one person with Down syndrome, you know one person with Down syndrome. <laughs> it's like anybody else, right? Uh, and that's because it can be so wide ranging. Um, so tell us about your daughter and not just about her as a patient, but also her as a human. How old is she? Tell us about her. Yeah, I really loved how you described it, uh, described what Down syndrome is, because it is everybody, everybody's unique. Everybody is different. They obviously, um, Down syndrome is, is a third copy on the 21st chromosome that it's that extra chromosome that they have. And we, you know, in the Down syndrome community, we like to say they're, you know, rocking that extra chromosome and because it makes them what makes them extra special, but also presents some challenges um, to their health, to development in their body and in their brain. And um, so she is yeah, five years old. 
and she is just a little ball of energy and just so much fun to be around. Um, she's still nonverbal, meaning she doesn't actually speak. She can uh, make sounds. Uh, she has amazing comprehension. I know she understands a lot of what we say, but is still uh, unable to communicate. Um, but, uh, but yeah, comes alive when she's in the outdoors. How much, uh, I've seen photos of you hiking with her on your back. How much kid are we talking about here? How much does this, this five-year-old way, like yeah. in terms of, <laughs> in terms of backpacking a, a five-year-old, how, what does that look like? Yeah. She is about 40 pounds. Okay. It's, so yeah, it's uh, not, and, yeah. and, Ooh. uh, she is. And it's, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, when I have like friends either, you know, try to carry her or anything, it, she's just a lot of dead weight. Uh, people with Down syndrome mm. typically have hypotonia, which is low tone, low muscle tone, which just makes it really hard for their muscles to, you know, really just, uh, you know, grasp things well. And so, mm. you know, when we pick her up, she doesn't like hold on to me. So it's really just, <laughs> I kind of call it, she's just like a sack of potatoes because, right. you, you know, that's how she, you're, she's holding you. And so, um, which is why we still carry her in a pack. She's able to, um, hike by herself, um, but not for super long periods of time. And she gets tired and then, you know, she carry her for a little bit. Then she has a burst of energy and wants to do it all by herself. So. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I know I've seen also seen you with oxygen for her. Is she still on oxygen regularly? Yeah. So she, um, was born with a couple little tiny holes in her heart and it's called pulmonary hypertension. So, uh, the oxygen was required, uh, for about her first year of life, it was required, uh, 24 seven. And then as kind of the holes, she got bigger, her heart got bigger, the holes kind of closed up and things got better. Uh, they still recommended oxygen at night. And then now, um, it's also typical, uh, people with down syndrome sometimes will have sleep apnea. And hers is very mild, but they said she'll definitely benefit if she's already keeping, she like I said, she's used to this. This has been her whole life of sleeping with, you know, oxygen on and she keeps it on really well at night. So I said, it'll definitely just, just help her as you know, she grows and develops. So that's why, yeah, that's why she's on it now. So I bring these things up because I want to really paint a picture of, um, what, the well first of all like we talked about before that you know one person with down syndrome you know one person's with down syndrome and uh, our you know folks listening to this might be envisioning somebody they know with down syndrome who has a very different um picture of what theirs looks like for them um you know like i have a friend at our church whose son has downs and yeah it's not at all the same you know yeah. except that he it's also that and so i just want to make sure we're painting an accurate picture but also when we talk about going outside and, and about all the adventuring you do with your family i just want people to understand like we're not just um sticking everybody in the car and rolling you know right. this is a system and a process and yeah. it comes with you know some extra bags quite literally. yeah so. oh, yeah absolutely <laughs> and we love to show you know just that like you know, yeah, everybody's adventure is going to look different and everyone's going to have different modifications and everyone's going to have, you know, yeah, different things that they require. But in the end, we're just hoping yeah. we're like, just get outside, you know, whatever capacity that is, that it doesn't, you know, you don't have to compare yourself to other people and that, well, I'm not, you know, as hardcore as they are doing that. Like that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like just, just that, just the act of the being outside is what's so amazing. Exactly. Just literally stepping outside your door in whatever capacity you have or can or wherever you live, wherever you are, whether you've got red rocks or a trail or just that sidewalk and the city street, it all matters. Um, and it's all whatever you can do. Okay. So I want to talk today uh, about how nature connects our children to the world, but also it ha connects our children and members of the family to each other. Um, so you talked about how Ruby just really comes alive outside. Um, so maybe you can tell us about how going outside and spending time in nature, um, what it means to your sons and to Ruby. I mean, it just means our, you know, connection time and ex exploring, letting them be kids, letting them, I mean, I think in this world where we're so overloaded with everything that's technology, it's just a total disconnect and just, 
I don't know, like it's human connection, it's connection to the earth, it's connection, you know, to those around you. It's just, it's a different type. I feel like it just means more. And, you know, they just, they look forward to that time. Not all the time. I have kids that complain and don't want to go do things also. I <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I, I never want to paint this picture of like, this. we're this perfect family and everything's just working for us all the time because that's not true. But, you know, we do have a lot of really awesome moments, you know, together in the outdoors. And it's all those, you know, tiny awesome moments that that make it worth it. Oh, such a good way to describe it. Because is that not the truth? My sons, uh, one of them has made something of a career. He's 12. So short <laughs> career, but a career now of proclaiming his love for being inside. Um, and which is really fun because, you know, like this is all called humans outside. That's the point. Yeah. Right? So he, at any given, anytime he has the opportunity, will tell whoever will listen that he would prefer to go to a hotel. Um, <laughs> and my, yeah, it's great. And then my, my nine-year-old uh, will loves being outside but will, you know, throw his own little nine-year-old version of a temper tantrum, right? Whatever that looks like, just crying, or I don't want to, or really grumpy, you know, whatever that means on that day. Uh -huh. Nine-year-olds are like that. Uh, and, but within minutes of being out there, it's just so happy. Like, he's clearly happy to be there. He's sprinting down the trail. He's, you know, fine. He's found a stick and he's having a Star Wars battle behind me. This is, you know, just run-of-the-mill normal, normal behavior. But, may, you know, it's not always peaches and rainbows or whatever exactly. but we're always at the end of the day like we're all glad to be there although my 12 year old has asked me if there's a elevator to the bottom of the Grand Canyon <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are hoping for that so I'm wondering though if if there's a difference between what it means to your sons and what it means to your daughter uh just because of their their age difference do you do you have you noticed that change over time Actually, not really. Like I, that's the thing is I think we think, oh, kids are growing up and they're outgrowing all this, you know, stuff. And, but I find that they like to just, you know, play with the rocks and, and hmm. be creative and pretend, you know, that they're doing something else, you know, like thinking of like when we went to great sand dunes and you think, oh yeah, you know, a bunch of teenagers. Well, I mean, they're, they're kind of, they're actually like the tween kind of age really. But, you know, they, they were out there building. I didn't realize they had packed a bunch of Hot Wheel tracks and cars and everything in their backpack. And they brought them and they were playing with them. And, like, and I was just like, they just want to, you know, be little kids and play and be creative. And they just had a blast. And you would think, you know, yeah. like, oh, yeah. Like I said, usually, yeah, 13-year-old boys love playing in the sand. Well, mine does. Because he just, yeah, had it, you know, with his brother. And then they involved Ruby and, you know, let her play. And so they just, like, they do find a way to somehow connect all together. Um, hmm. But still, yeah, can, you know, do their own thing. And sometimes they act a little bit more grown up. Like, you know, my oldest might like to try to watercolor, you know, get a picture of what, you know, what, where where we are and, and paint a, a really quick picture. Because, you know, we took a watercolor class. And so you know, he's trying to do that. So they still do some of like their grown up things, but they still just like, they just want to be imaginative and creative. And they're like, just let me be, yeah. let me explore, let me climb the rocks and see how far I can go. But you're, you're, what you're identifying there is like a whole thread of creativity that sort of transcends age. Mm -hmm. So watercoloring might be more adult, right? right? But kids water, I mean, it doesn't have to be, Yeah, you know? Um, and, and I kind of like, as you were talking, I was remembering times that I, even as an adult, am having sort of that, I don't, you know, maybe call it creative play while I'm in some of these spaces. I would be a big old liar if I said that I was not thinking about that book, Island of the Blue Dolphins, while I was oh, yeah. in Channel Islands National Park. Yeah. Right. Which I is one of my favorite books. And I spent, I, who can even count the hours, um, pretending to be her on the beach in California when I was 12. Yeah. And then I got to go to channel islands and you best believe that I stood on that cliff Yeah, and I, uh, envisioned myself as the character in that book. Um, and I, I mean, I'm an adult, they claim, yeah. you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 
it's amazing how that really brings you back home to, I guess, that t- in touch with your, with your inner child. How do you think it connects your family together? Well, I, I think like it connects all of us because like we plan a lot of this stuff together. So, you know, it's kind of just mm. like, like every year, you know, as the new year rolls around, okay what national parks do we want to hit this year? Like what kind of like, what does everybody want to do? And that's where it's like, we kind of all, you know, come together when it was my, when my daughter was graduating high school, that's kind of was like, okay, so we're going to go, we're going to have spring break. And what national park do you really want to go? I mean, I kind of gave her, I'm like, you know, as much as I also would love to travel to Hawaii and, or so, you know, you know, American Samoa, like the, I want to see all mm-hmm. those amazing national parks. You know, we had to kind of give budget constraints, you know, but like, hey, within all of these states, what do you, she's just like, I want to go see the sequoias. I want to go see those, those um, amazing trees. That's what I wanted to. So that's how we planned. We planned her um, whole, just a, basically it was her senior trip around you know, what she wanted to go see. And so I feel like, you know, then it's like, we honor like what you would like and we all go do Mm. it as a family, you know? And I'm just like, is Mm -hmm. this, you know, and then also, is this everything you dreamed of? Is this what you, you know, envisioned? And she's like, oh my gosh, it's so much more amazing. You know, those types of things. And so, you know, it's kind of that, that planning process, the road trip process. Those are the things, you know, because you're stuck in a car for however many hours, like you just, you know, you're forced to bond, you're forced to be together. And it just, you know, helps you bond that way. And then obviously, you know, doing the same hikes, working together, things that are hard, you know, climbing rocks and people, you know, those types of things that it just kind of like brings you all together. Yeah, I think, you know, we think a lot in the sort of outdoor community and retreats and, and that kind of thing about the benefits to your self for doing those hard things, you know, builds crit, builds endurance. And we might think about them in terms of how it can help you in a leadership setting. You know, there's lots of these leadership retreats that um, group cohesion. But I I feel like we don't always stop and think about how it helps you as a family and relationships with your spouse and your kids. Um, and that that's an, just another great benefit of heading into nature is that it does build those those family relationships and those family bonds, you know? Yeah. Like I said, we recently, you know, we went backpacking in Zion and the thing with, with us for backpacking is because I have to carry a pack for Ruby and, Mm. you know, basically carry her most of the way. So some of she can do on, on her own, but the rest of it, she has to be carried. So that, limits the amount of packs that we have to carry stuff. So basically the the burden lies on my husband and my two boys. Like we have three packs for five people because, you know, Ruby's mm. food and clothes and diapers and wipes and all those things, like everything has to be able to go and we have to divide it all between all of us. And it's just a, a good thing of teamwork of like, you know, and I'm helping you and I'm carrying this and you're carrying that and you're helping me. And like, just of dividing, you know, just like we all, we all share, you know, the quote unquote burden at meaning like, you know, we all, we all share, we share just like we share our triumphs, like at the end of the trail and how happy we were to be finished. Cause we were like done, you know, but just but like, (laughs) you know, the, you know, big hug together and celebrating, you know, we also shared that, you know, that I hate the sand and I hate this. Heck I'm even starting where I'm just like, we have to take one more step in sand. I'm going to lose it. You know, like they see their mom, like (laughs) getting mad and wanting to give up too. You know, we all just encourage each other. Like, cause everyone, it's not like everyone's at this, everyone's not complaining at the same time. It's like, everyone's kind of struggling at different times. So everyone encourages, but it's like all of those types of things, like together of sharing that burden, sharing the difficulty, but then also sharing the triumph and the happiness, you know, that those are the things I think creates the bonds. Yeah. Oh, so good. Hey humans, just a quick break to ask for a huge favor. If you are loving this episode, could you take a second to give us five stars or a great rating and review in whatever podcast platform you use? 
Those ratings help other humans find the podcast too and spread that humans outside love around the world. I can't thank you enough for listening and sharing your support through a rating and review. Now, back to the episode. What does going outside mean to your relationship with your children? So I think like I like to watch my kids develop their relationships together and I feel like they learn a relationship with me, but sort of flipping it on their that head, right? How does it change how you see them? Well, I think just like, cause you can see them do things that are super hard and then see like watching them be proud of themselves is, is just so cool because, you know, seeing them have that confidence in themselves, seeing it, that it's from their, Mm -hmm. you know, their own hard work. Cause I mean, I can be encouraging, but I can't move their legs. I can't, you know, it, it really is them on their own. Like, I'm there cheering them on and facilitating it, but they do it. They're doing it by themselves to watch. So watching their confidence grow in themselves and yeah, like those relationships together. Like I get such a kick out of like, if I'm hiking in front of them or behind them and, you know, I'm carrying Ruby and the boys are by themselves, like listening to their conversations, you know, together and whatever they're talking about. Like, I just, I'm like, they're, yeah, they're creating those bonds between themselves. It's just, yeah, it's really, it's, it's cool. And sometimes they're fighting, but you know, then, and sometimes they're hiking apart, but then, you know, other times then they come back together because now they're okay. And now they can be nice to each other. You know, it's just, yeah. Yeah. I love watching my boys do that too. I, uh, yeah, I'm super resonating with that because it, it is really cool to see them have, Hey, you know, Hey, guess what you know they have like these moments where they're where they're just you know close in their own you know child ways right I mean my son's 12 my oldest son's 12 so it's not a mature way right and then within five minutes one of them is pantsing the other right so it's just back (laughs) where we were to start with yeah um you know but good I guess yeah we could probably do without the pantsing but (laughs) it's you know, it's, it's healthy that way that they, that they have this bond. They don't, it's, it's encouraging to know that they don't hate each other all the yeah, time. So true. yeah, very true. <laughs> and you kind of, it's almost this window into a mature relationship that I'll be able to watch them have as adults. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Uh, yes. And they'll probably still pants each other. So yeah, let's exactly. Be real. That's <laughs> what boys do. <laughs> and that's, I guess that's okay. As long as it's not in, fully in public please. <laughs> if you guys are listening to this don't do that okay <laughs> uh, I know that you're really intentional about taking adventures with each of them individually and I just loved seeing that um because it's not something that I found that really inspirational it's not something I've started doing so you know maybe a little selfishly can you talk about why you do that so actually um, it stemmed from a comment that I read that somebody had posted um, about the REI video. And mm-hmm. someone just said, like, I feel sorry for all those other kids. Like the other kids, like everyone just like in a way of like just saying like everyone pays attention to Ruby and the other kids are forgotten. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, that person does not have an insight into my life and does not know, you yeah. know, especially you know, having an older child that has dealt with, uh, mental health issues and how much Mm -hmm. time and, you know, dedication I have given to her helping her through all that, like, doesn't know how she had the spotlight for a long time helping her. And like, that was a learning point for my children. Cause sometimes I, I'm totally honest that sometimes they say, you know, Oh, we feel that everyone just thinks Ruby is, the important one. And we have discussions about Mm. that because I do care about how they feel. And it was Mm. kind of just like that hearing, hearing that, seeing that comment that just put, I'm like, I really, we always think our kids like know that we love them and we care about them, but I'm like some, and words are important, but you know, actions are important as well. And I just felt I need to do something to you know, show them that they are just equally as important and special and unique and valued in this family. And it was just a thing of like, you know, first on kind of accident where I was just like, you know, I was going to go on a hike by myself. And my son was just kind of like, Hey, can I come with you? I'm like, Hey, yeah, sure. 
uh, yeah, come on, let's let's go. And it was just something local and just like he's just talking to me and jibber jabbering about, you know, all these mm. things. And I just realized I'm like, this is really this is really valuable because he's opening up and he's telling me about how he feels. And especially, you know, with teenage boys, that's not always easy. And, and just like, he kind of, cause I asked him like, well, how come you're like so open and everything goes, well, nobody else is around. Like his siblings aren't around. So then it's not like he's trying to hide anything, but sometimes, yeah, you're, maybe you're embarrassed to talk about other things in front of your siblings. Cause you don't want them to make fun of you or, those types of things. And I realized I'm like, this is really important time. And so then it would became a more, much more intentional thing of like, Hey, you and me, let's go, you know, let's do this. Let's go here. And, um, you know, with my other son of, uh, you know, we, he has to come with me a lot of times. I said, I, I drive him to school or he'll come with me to go pick up things and just that time in the car. So then when it's just him, starts asking mm-hmm. questions and think like, it's just that I've rec- I've just seen that, like that sweet spot of like when they're by themselves and everyone's not around them, they kind of just, yeah, open up. Right. And so then it was just like, right. I wanted to, I'm like, okay, we need to do this more because this is definitely, you know, a value. Yeah. No. Okay. So as if somebody could understand everything about your life from a 20 minute REI video, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> That, yeah. that must be said, um, please. Uh, and I say that as somebody who said, you know, we're in a documentary and things are written about us and all that stuff. And I mean, that's just, that's silly. Sorry. So <laughs> just, I have to get that out. Okay. Huh. Um, but I, I love that you took that as a learning moment too, which is just real, you know, again, as somebody who has stuff done on her too, it's, that's, that's a real hard thing to do, right? Because you see a negative comment and it, the easiest thing is to think, one, why did I read the comments? That was dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and two, and two, um, no, you don't know me. But you didn't do that. You took it as for what it was worth and, you know, leave the good leave the bad, take the good, not the other way around, (laughs) leave the bad, take the good. And I just, I think that's so important and, um, good job. It's huge. (laughs) I also think that, um, there's something to be said for pausing to be intentional like that. Um, that lots of things happen unintentionally in life. Like you can walk by and do whatever you want. Right. Um, in the car, like you were saying, but to spend that, to take that moment and set it aside is signaling to your kids that that's worth doing. And we're all busy. You know, it's so easy not to do that because we have all sorts of things going on in life. But um, I think that's really inspiring. And um, I'm going to try to to replicate that. I'm going to take your advice and see see what I can do with my kids like that, because it is it's meaningful. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It is very meaningful. Do you think spending time in nature has made you a better version of yourself? Absolutely. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of patience um, in my home. Uh, meaning, you know, I just, I feel like, yeah, half the time, yeah, my kids don't listen to me. They don't pay attention to things I've asked. My husband doesn't listen to me. Like sometimes I feel like I'm never heard and I do lose my patience. I, you know, I wish I didn't yell as much as I do, unfortunately. And I just feel that in the outdoors, I just, my demeanor changes. Like, I guess I just, I don't feel the stress of whatever, I guess I am feeling at home. And I don't feel like I yell at my kids unless they're in a dangerous, like you're going to fall off the cliff type thing. Like I don't really, I don't yell at them. Like I let them, yeah, go, you know, play and get dirty and get messed. Like it just, it doesn't bother me and I don't care. And it's just like, let them, I don't know. It's, it's just different. So I feel like I have much more patience and tolerance with them, with myself, Mm. you know, I just like my anxiety level just comes way down. So it just makes me different. Like I just, I'm not bothered by things. I always lose track of time. Like, and that's why I'm usually pretty intentional of when I skip schedule things to make, you know, when I'm mm-hmm. outdoors of making sure I don't have uh, other, t- you know, commitments so that it's just, I don't, yeah, well, if we're here for four hours, if the hike takes us four hours, if it takes us an hour, you know, we got all the time. It's fine. You know, like, I'm just so different than when I'm, 
you know, in just regular mom mode, getting things done. And so I definitely think that, you know, I'm, I'm more yeah. pleasant, and happier and more, you know, yeah. Patient. Yeah. Okay. So as someone who also struggles with all of the things you're saying <laughs> in <laughs> regular life and also feels those things fall away outside, Melody, how do we bring that back inside? No. How do we do it, man? <laughs> I don't know. Well, sometimes I think like we like to, t- we like to talk. A- I'm a big dreamer. Like I talk about lots of things that I want to do. Realistically, is all that stuff going to get done? No, but in my head, it's still fun to talk about. And we like, like, we like to watch sometimes like what'll also change the demeanor. I'm like, Hey, put on. Cause my kid, like he, my, my, my oldest son, Logan, he is just, he knows like everything about everything and just watches YouTube videos about all, you know, all sorts of stuff and finds like tons of hiking channels and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, let's watch, let's look at a hike. Let's see, let's find a hike that we can do, you know, like it'll, it, and that's the part, I guess where, you know, and then it brings it at home where we talk about it, we plan, and then that it helps me calm down a little bit too. Or, you know, yeah. reliving kind of the fun thing, you know, remember reliving the memories that we've done. That helps yeah. a little bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out myself. Maybe it's just, it's practice and yeah. go, I'm just thinking out loud, like it's practice, right? And then it's going back to intentionality. So Maybe it's thinking through the things that we like about ourselves when we're out there being, being low key adventure mom. And yeah. (laughs) And then try like being purposeful to transport those things inside. I don't know. I'm just, like I said, I'm just thinking out loud here because I want to figure out how to, how to be that version of me every day. Yeah. During my job and mom life and all that stuff. So yeah, that would be, yes. So helpful. Yeah. So helpful. But, you know, I think people like that's the dream that people are searching for too, right? Like we sell everything we have and live in RV. We do what I did and move to Alaska, right? All of these things are designed to reset and refocus. And guess what? Like I moved to Alaska. I bought a house. I live in the house. It's the same (laughs) as being in Tennessee for a lot of purposes, right? Except that I have more mountains right outside my door. (laughs) I'm still me. Me, ha- me didn't stay in Tennessee. I came here with all of my stuff to Alaska and absent of that intentionality, it's the same. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Can't, I have no help for you listeners. We're just trying to figure it out too. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've been talking a lot of, we have no help on that, but we've been talking a lot about using nature to bring yourself closer to your children and bring families together. So I'm hoping that you can give us a couple of actionable tips that people can do to sort of walk us out with this. How uh, can people use nature to bring themselves closer to their children and their families? Well, these are just a couple of things that we have done that I think help. I think like, once again, everyone's kind of different, but so the biggest thing is to, I think is set a goal meaning have a common goal as a family. And so for us, the common goal is we want to visit all of the national parks together. Um, It started off, I said, my, you know, older, oldest daughter who's married, like she was part of that. And now she is, you know, living on her own and having her own life. And I get her to come and join us occasionally and we're super excited for when that happens. So, you know, it's not her involved, unfortunately, everymore, but we still have, you know, the other three kids and we're like, we're still, still, still the same goal, still the same family. So let's keep going. And that helps us like, whether it's maybe it's visiting all the state parks in your area. Maybe it's like, I love the 52 hike challenge. Like that's something that a family could very easily, you know, do and worry like, Hey, we're going to do 52 hikes together this year. Like, I think it, you know, it's something of like, is if this is our goal as a family and it's kind of a, and it's a tangible goal, like everyone's always like, well, we want to be happy as a family. Of course, that's great. But you know, like what is something specific and having that kind of a goal of, uh, you know, visiting all the state parks or we're going to, you know, kayak every single lake in our state or what, you know, whatever, like those types of things. Like it does, it's whatever interests your family, even if it's just, we're going to go camping in this, this many places. Like there's just, there's so many things you could do with 
what's your what your family's interests maybe you don't even if it's not it's just like we just want to visit historic sites whatever but i'm like it's getting to getting you together and it's getting you outdoors doing something different i feel like that is one of the you know best hmm. best things that you can do um and like i said the other one is like i think road tripping is so i think it's like right now it's pretty it's a pretty popular thing to do um, from what I hear, like I hear you, it's hard to even buy an RV because people, they're like on back order. Everyone's getting one now. And I said, we don't have one. I don't have a place to store it. I don't have that, those kind of funds, but the road tripping, even if, you know, just within your state, um, it doesn't have to be long distance, but there's, you know, of getting all the things you need, learning to pack the car, getting a routine down. Cause that's, that's, a, it's just a, a connection as a family. Like, teaching the same skill, you know, teaching those skills of, of being prepared, of having all the things you need. Like, it's kind of like, it's really good for kids. Like that they're okay. You guys are responsible for getting this. You guys are responsible. Yeah. For that. Like it, it t teaches them a little bit of self-reliance, but knowing like, Hey, I'm important in this family. Cause I'm in charge of this. And if I don't do this, then the whole family suffers. And sometimes that's a little bit of a risk when, <laughs> when your husband's in charge of matches, and doesn't bring any. You know, <laughs> I, I have experienced this risk. Yes. yes. So yeah. you know, and then you're all like, and there's no cell phone service, and you have to travel an hour, you know, to go find some because, anyways. But you know, like you see what I'm saying, like it's but see, but then it's still like it's all part of the adventure, all part of the fun, it's all part of the story that the kids don't forget, you know, those types of things. So yeah, I just think absolutely, you know, road tripping is 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 a great great way. And, um, and then the other one is I, so along with those intentional dates, so I have like actual like date books. I made books hmm. for at this point, I just have one for my husband and I, and I have one for Logan. And I told Samuel that next year I would make one for him to just, like I said, we, that was kind of like the Christmas present where like, these are going to be our date books and they don't have to like, one of them was to just have a, like, for us to pack a picnic when we go hike. Cause I don't normally like bring mm -hmm. lunch and all that. Like I just bring snacks, but for us to actually sure. pack and go and have a picnic somewhere, you know, together. So it doesn't have to be things that you're all spending money on it. it things that right. like, it could be very easy, but for children, I think it's something really special for them where they have a book and for them, especially if you actually print the pictures <laughs> that you, that you take, and they have it there as sort of a scrapbook. It's it's a it's a reminder of like yeah special times that they've had. And so yeah. And the other thing is I said it's just to put, I have to put it on the calendar. I have to schedule because hmm. I mean I work full time. I have a very busy life. We have doctor's appointments. We have you know there's mm -hmm. cool stuff. There's always I get it that life is super busy, and so we have to plan. Hey, this is the day. And so and I put it in my calendar. Just like I would a doctor's appointment of like, oh, I can't do anything this day. I go, this is the day I'm hiking. This is the day I'm hiking out. I'm hiking with the kids. We're going, we're, we're doing something, whether it's, you know, and sometimes it's turned out because of weather, like we're like, you know, or how we feel, you know what, we're just playing in the backyard and blowing up the kiddie pool and just splashing around, hanging out together. So it doesn't have to be like you're going someplace far. It can be just, but, but that yeah. it's scheduled. And I think that like, it shows the kids that that they you know they matter they're important that that time is valuable to you as well because you've put it in your calendar where all your other important things are and so right yeah that's right yeah and it, and it makes sure that you you know it keeps it on top as a priority for you I know something's not in my calendar um yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's not even it's just, it's a bad situation because I, cause I am busy too, yeah. you know? Um, and we're all busy. That's the thing. Right. Um, and I think some of us are better at being busy than others. That's not a compliment. That's yeah. No, true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm that person. That's a commentary on me. So, well, thank you for that advice. I really, I really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, we, I, I really am grateful when, um, guests share their lived experience in the form of advice. So thank you so much for, for doing that. Um, I'm hoping you can walk us out with a couple of things we call our leftovers round uh, and just some stuff that I like to know. So can you tell us what your favorite piece of outdoor gear is? Just something that makes your life 
not necessarily easier, just something you love. Just what do you love? Well, I love my backpacks. Um, I'm bonded to the, you know, my carrier <laughs> that I carry Ruby in because I just, I said, I also like, I look at it and when I see it, like, it just gives me, it just has also sent, it, it's obviously used. It's, you know, has a, mm. a purpose, but it has sentimental value because I think of all the hikes that she sat in and fallen asleep in and pulled my hair and like, I love it. So I have to say, you know, I really love my Deuter uh, kids comfort because it's just, it's my favorite. And then I love that I, my own, I have, you know, a Deuter pack that's just my own. And that mm-hmm. is special to me because it's of the, like, this is mine. Cause it's like when I don't have to carry any children and I'm on my own and I'm just melody, I'm not mom. I'm not this. I'm not all these other things. I'm just myself. And it's my, my favorite pack. Yeah. Yeah. What's a, what's a super essential oh, piece of gear? Cool I, mean, I think your packs. My cool, cool cloth cloth. has oh. changed my life. I'm not kidding because, and I'm not a rep for them or anything. I seriously like, because it was always a challenge of all like, I, when other women are like, I, I try to use those other different apparatuses that they have out there, yeah. not working for me and no. like it. <laughs> yeah. Not, not a fan. And then also just, you know, like, I don't want to pack toilet paper and burying it in places now. Like there's so much, like, it's just so much easier. And so, yeah. you know, the cool cloth. We the- have not talked about Kula very much on the podcast. I think one other person brought it up or maybe in season one, but listeners, guys, we're talking about Kula this season. Oh. I you're you're gonna hear about these folks. First of all, their Instagram yes. feed is one of the best things on the internet. Hands yes. down. Yes. Far and away. So- <laughs> they always make me laugh. They have amazing so one of the things we use to connect, um, they have a, they have classes. They have lots of classes. And so yes. Uh, that's one that my uh, son and I, we took a watercolor class, uh, through them with, uh, jitterbug art and it was so awesome. And we had so much fun, like learning and, you know, like, and just, it was a great price, you know, for a watercolor class that you can do in your home because, you know, it's really hard, you know, going places, whatever. And then even just with everything with the pandemic, like it was so amazing. So they have these amazing classes and I've taken several of them and they've all been fantastic. They're all by different people. And then, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. it's, it's so good. It, it, it's, it's so hard because I'm like, mainly when I'm hiking, I'm like, I have boys. So all those, you know, my husband right. and my boys, I'm like, sure, it's easy for you. Right. Ruby has a diaper. Right. So I'm all like, you have it easy. And I'm like, mom's the one that's struggling here. And it just has just really yeah. changed. And then I do, I love, I love teaching women how to pee outdoors. It's so much fun. Like, okay, I'm going to give you a demo. And it's just fun. Like, especially most of my it friends. It's an important yeah. life skill. It is. And so, yes, that is my essential. I always, I have, I have them everywhere, tucked in lots of different places, just in case. Love it. So smart. I'm going to have an entire episode on peeing outside. You, yes. You've inspired me. I love it. <laughs> Stay tuned, guys. You will hear us. Okay, finally, please walk us out. Uh, with your favorite outdoor moment, just if you close your eyes and imagine yourself in your favorite outdoor space, um, where are you and what are you doing? What's the moment? So I just actually recently started doing this um, this past year in the national parks and it started at great sand dunes where I was just sitting there watching my family uh, play. And I just said, I need to have a moment from every place where I do this. And then I write it down. Cause you said, if you don't write it down, you will forget. So write it down, find a journal, write it down. But I remember just sitting there and the sun was setting and just watching all of my children just be so happy and their dad playing with them. And I was just enjoying the breeze and just like in the sand is kind of blowing and kind of being annoying, but they just didn't care. And just watching the laughs and the giggles. And I, and I was just kind of like a moment because that I realized I'm like, Gosh, this is, this is just what it's all about. Just seeing, seeing them be happy, seeing them just enjoy each other playing in, you know, whatever nature gave them, which was just tons of sand. And it was just, was just gorgeous. And so it's kind of been something that I'm more intentional about. So that I, I, you know, every, every, every national park now to take a moment like that and remember it. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Melody, thank you so much for being on Humans Outside today. We sure appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for having me and for letting me tell my story. Well, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Humans Outside. If you've enjoyed this episode, why not give us a little love and leave a rating and review to make it easier for other listeners to find the podcast too. It really does make a difference. Until next time, we'll see you out there.